Hello, and welcome to Back to the Science. I'm Dr. Susan Oliver, and I'm a scientist. And this is Fred Oliver, and he's a teddy bear. And if you're wondering why I'm introducing you to Fred and not my dog Cindy like I usually do, this is what can sometimes happen if Cindy gets her paws on stuffed toys. And I couldn't risk it happening to Fred. Anyway, this is just a quick video to explain something that seems to be perplexing both Professor Norman Fenton and Dr. John Campbell. Professor Norman Fenton recently tweeted the following, and just when you think it wasn't possible to have less trust in official UK statistics, dot, dot, dot. And this is accompanied by a figure showing the discrepancy between the population estimated by the ONS compared with the number of patients registered at GP practices in England with the following highlighted in yellow. So 5.5 million more people in England registered with a GP than the total population. And we also know there are millions of England residents not registered with a GP. And then Dr. John Campbell jumped on the bandwagon. Um, ONS released data on the 2nd of November. Census day, March uh, 21, 2021. The size of the usual resident population of England and Wales was uh, 59 million and a half. Um, and that was the breakdown. So 56 million people in uh, England. 56 million people, uh, 56 million and a half people in England. Now, NHS Digital, um, uh, they say that there's 62,000, 62 million people registered with the GP practice in England as of the 1st of November 2022. So to be fair, NHS Digital are only about five and a half million out. So that's like... Uh, yeah, five and a half million out. So, so 26, uh, 27, yeah, it's about five and a half million, isn't it? So the population is 56 million. Okay, it could have gone up a little bit in that time, but not that many by any means. 56 million and a half people in the UK, uh, 62 million, uh, 56, sorry, 56 million living in the UK. So living in England, get it right, John. 56 million living in England. 62 million um, registered with the GP. And we know that there's several million people in England not registered with the GP. So if we want to know um, how many people are registered with GPs in England, we can see that it's more than the total population. Th this is just absurd. Um, how are we supposed to trust figures from the uh, NHS Digital and Security Agency if they're gonna get at least five and a half million out? Not impressive, not impressive at all. And uh, it's just one of those absurdities you keep finding. So there you go. You can believe official data or you can believe official data. <laughs> but it, it, the, the Office for National Statistics uh, is, is the correct one there. Um, NHS Digital are like way out. And why is, it, is that deliberate? I mean, it's a heck of a mistake to make if it's, you know, what, 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 um, of course, they wouldn't lie about it, would they? But, but, but um, yeah, inexplicable. And uh, it's just one of those mischievous things I like talking out. I didn't discover it, of course, the great uh, English academic, um, uh, Norman Fenton, I identified that and I uh, pinched it off his Twitter site. Of course, if either Professor Fenton or Dr. Campbell had done a little due diligence, they would know there are a number of logical reasons for the discrepancy in figures. And in fact, you can find a report all about it, which was published at the end of 2016 in the online House of Commons library. Now, I will take you through the main findings of the report, but first, an anecdote. For those of you who don't know, I was born in England, but in 1967, my parents decided to become what are known as 10 pound poms and emigrate to Australia. And Fred and I came to, and you can see Fred tucked under my arm in this photo of us leaving Manchester on our way to Australia. 
10 years later in 1977, my parents saved up enough money for us all to go back for a holiday and reunite with our relatives. Fred stayed home in Australia, but my little brother, Peter, who was born in Australia, came back with us. The trip back in the aeroplane was super exciting. We got to see inside the cockpit and the flight attendant smuggled Peter and me goodies from first class, including some specially perfumed wet flannels, which I rubbed all over my face and arms. Alas, by the time we landed in England, I was covered in a rash. So my parents took me to my former doctor and Guess what? I was still registered with him, as were my parents, even though we had left the country 10 years earlier. Although what I shared is just an anecdote, it turns out there are lots of what are known as ghost patients registered with NHS GPs. This report states these ghost patients include people who have moved house or left the country without deregistering as well as some people who have died. Also, short-term migrants aren't included in ONS's population estimates, but some are registered with GPs. The other thing that the report covered was that although overall there were more patients registered with NHS GPs than population estimates, this varied quite a bit by area, with some areas showing a higher number of patients registered than the ONS population and some areas showing a lower number. You will notice that two of the locations where registrations are above normal are Cambridge and Oxford, which of course are towns with huge university student populations. These students are likely to be registered with GPs in the area but not necessarily picked up by the census, which is only undertaken every 10 years. And most students manage to finish their degrees in less than 10 years. Those from the UK are also most likely to be registered with GPs in their hometown as well. Interestingly, the towns where GP registrations are lower than the ONS population estimates include some towns with military bases members of the military wouldn't need to register with local GPs because they get their medical treatment on the base. So the inconsistencies between the ONS and the NHS figures aren't the gotcha moment that Dr John Campbell and Professor Norman Fenton seem to think. And if either of them had done some basic due diligence, they would know why. If you'd like to read the report in full, I've provided a link to it in the video's description. If you've got this far, which is probably not that far because it's a fairly short video, but anyway, thank you for listening. And if you've liked or commented on the video, double thank you because that helps the algorithm and means that more people will see the video. And of course, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. I really appreciate your support. I will be continuing to make videos about the science in the future, so if you'd like to see them, please hit the subscribe button. Thank you.